Welcome everybody to Tales from the Tackle Shop. My name is Andy Page, and as always, my co-host is Alex Bez Bates. Bez. Yeah. What's that all about? Well, we couldn't do a podcast last week because you were partying. Right. And when I saw you New yeah. Year's Eve yeah. in the ship, you looked like Bez from Happy Mondays. Really? I don't even know who he is. You were dancing. No, I wasn't. Yes, you were. No chance. You were seen in Casanos. Weren't me, mate, because I never went Casanos. <laughs> you were there. I swear my life. I have video evidence. It's not me. It's someone that looks like me, but it was not me. I wouldn't <laughs> go to that place. At <laughs> this is why we couldn't have a podcast last week, because you were over in a big party dancing to Happy Mondays. But no. Yeah. It was not me. <laughs> I bought a drone. I've seen, yeah. I've learned um, something about drones yesterday. What's that then? Don't fly them in the wind. <laughs> Schoolboy error. Well, Leighton's got a drone. Leighton's eight. So he bought my little drone to mess about with at Christmas. And I saw this one in the sale and I thought, oh, that might work well for the old YouTube video in. So we went for a little drone drone off yesterday drone afternoon. Off. Drone off oh. yesterday afternoon. We went down the sewage works, down the 20 foot. Yeah. Thought we'd go down there. The wind off our back so it wouldn't go in the drain. So Leighton sends his drone up in the air, whew, straight into the field. He looked at me and went, oh, I've lost it. I said, no, you can run around in a minute. And I thought, oh, this is easy. you just got to go straight up and let it hover. Put my drone up, whew, twice as far into the field. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely useless. So back to the drawing board. But I had an eight-year-old who was quite happy to run into the field and get and them both back. Yeah, sure so... We didn't lose them, but they're, yeah, they're fantastic things, though, aren't they? I mean, especially for for videos and pictures and yeah, but you got to, you got to fly it when there's no wind. Well, yeah, that's true. That's true. I suppose different drones do different things, don't they? Yeah, mine tends to go straight to a field. Straight to a field. Yeah, mm. something to play with in the summer, anyway, in the close season, I think. Okay, right, we've got a lot to talk about. Shall we start with? The Riviera Welland? Yeah, definitely. Well, obviously, there's been quite a few matches before Christmas and now <coughs> over Christmas and a lot more to come on there. And the match before Christmas, the conditions were really tough. Um, I organised a, a knock-up on there. There's about 40 of us fished. And we didn't fish the sort of epicentre pegs in the town opposite the poacher and all that. But £21 won it and it... <laughs> You just got the feeling there's a lot of fish there, but the conditions weren't quite right. And Elliot Newman ran um, a knock-up over Christmas. I think he had about 49 fished. So it's, it's a big knock-up, you know, it's a decent match. And um, pegged different areas to what I did. Uh, pegged the, the, in the town and round tax office and that. And it, the conditions, I looked at it and I thought, hmm, see a few fish topping. And I drew roughly two pegs away from where I drew in, in the match that I organised. And... It's not a noted area, it's, for those that know, it's sort of in between Chainbridge and the Moorings pub, so it's sort of no man's land really. Um, it's right where the one-way system starts, and the week before I drew the MPEG there, which was, it's always handy on any river, and I had 14 pounds of small fish, and I felt like there was a few fish there, but when we got down to the peg, it just felt right, it felt like there was going to be some fish caught. And Simon Wilson was a couple of pegs out, and I said, I reckon we're fishing for about 18 to 20 pounds today. I think there won't be many fish, but there'll be a nice stamp. So I sort of I didn't attack it from the start. I sort of took it gently, fed a ball, ball short and and a, and a line a little bit longer, and I thought, I'll just see how it goes, and then I'll sort of feel my way into the match. Anyway, after about five minutes, I thought, there's a lot of fish feeding today. It was absolutely rigid, and you looked everywhere, and everyone was netting fish. And um, the water level was dropping. It dropped it really quick. Um, and it, I, there was people sort of running the bank and saying, oh, it's solid in the town. And you sort of think, yeah, it'll be sort of 30 pound weights today and all this and all that. But when they actually weighed in, I mean, I won my section with 34 pound. And it was just phenomenal fishing. I've not seen a match like that in this area, definitely. I mean, the only river, probably the Y, um, in the town there is where they get some really big bags of fish but they're a lot bigger fish but it was just 
it was just ridiculous. The, the, the you know even I think Twin Bridges section Steve Arwood won that with twenty six, and it just got gradually better the further you got into town. Elliot was on the end peg near Chain Bridge, a par end, and he had forty eight pound. I thought like, that'll that'll comfortably win it today. As a forty four pound next to the Moorins Pub, then got to sort of the main town bit. I thought they'll have decent weights, but there was a fifty one Rob Hughes and a fifty one next to Tax Office. I think the lowest weight in one section of like eight was thirty four pound. It was just phenomenal. And then I spoke to Simon Godfrey, one of the lads that fishes in the team, and he was end peg up near the Coro end. It wasn't right tight to the Coro mouth, but was near the footbridge there at the Welland stores. And he said, I reckon I've caught fifteen pound in the first hour of these great big roach. He said, um, Pem Writing's got a right weight. Anyway, come back to the pub afterwards and he had fifty three and a half pound. That's that's like phenomenal fishing. It's a long way for him to come. He lives London way and definitely worth the the travel. So every, I think there was one thousand four hundred and ten pound of fish. This is this is what was caught. So it averages out at twenty eight pound per man of wow. roach. You know, and I bet out of all them there's only probably three perch caught in the whole match. That's a phenomenal amount of roach in it. Um and they're all different shapes and sizes and different areas respond differently so like near the tax office bridge around there there you get more fish but they're slightly smaller whereas where like pen was they average probably six ounces to eight ounces they're big fish they're not going to pack in there just for protection or no i think it's all to do with the floods what do you reckon they feed on though naturally um there's, there must be loads of food in there for them. Daf, not daft, it'd be a, also insect life. Yeah, yeah, and it's all bread fishing. I mean, you look at it and it's like an orangey colour. And ground bait and pinky does work, but you fish bread and it's like ten times better. So, you know, there's lots of people feeding the ducks. And them big roach like bread anyway, But and hemp. It's, hemp hasn't really worked, but I think as the sort of weeks go on and the colour drains out of it and it gets a bit clearer, the fish move about a little bit and probably tighten right up. There's a serious amount of fish to to move, but you know, and I think hemp will start working. But it's um, you speak to all that. It's never ever been as good as that. Never. That is mad, isn't it? But they got. To, I was just wondering. They they're not going to pack in there. The food source isn't there as well. No, no. I mean, people say, where do they go in the summer? Well, the Welland is quite a big river, massive, and the Coro it? as well is is a big deep uh, drain. And they can just hide, you know. They spend all summer in in the main river, and in the winter, they come in there for protection. Simple as that. Mm. You know, it's like the twenty first, the same thing. They they get pressured into the chain bridge or footbridge, and March is the same. It just attracts fish for the winter. They just migrate there, but they haven't migrated like that for a long well ever. I don't think I've never seen it like that all the way through. You know, you you talk to anglers, and they sort of tell you of days where there's been a thirty pound and an odd 40 pound of roach and stuff like that but not to have 49 anglers an average of 28 pound a man i think i know the answer yeah yeah there's a definite lack of predators um that means these silverfish have really boomed the last three or four or five years yeah i i think the, the well end is a bit different to the the rest of the drains yeah but you fish. look at all the other venues it's yeah. the same story yeah you're catching far more silverfish than were ever caught before so I think what's happening is the bigger predators have re- been reduced uh, massively. Mm. Also, on certain waters, there's less cormorants. I'm, I noticed this on the drains the last two or three yeah, years. I don't less... know about that. I think there's a lot more cormorants, but I think cormorants are wising up to where anglers are, and we don't see a lot of them. I don't know. You go to Rutland, I saw two flocks on there, both in excess of 300, 300 birds yeah. in each flock, and that yeah. was September. So I think they just... No, like you said, they're nowhere to go, but they're yeah. not on the drains as much. Um, I think they them. are. I think, uh, I mean, m- my dad walks his dogs along Creek Cottage. <coughs> and Creek Cottage isn't renowned for having any fish in it this time of year. Normally the fish are all in the town. But every time he walks, there's always 14 or 15 cormorants on these wires. So they're not there for no reason. There must no. be some fish there. And it's the yeah. same as the 40 foot. You drive along there 50 mile an hour now, and you can count them clear as day you know and they're in areas where you'd never think there'd be um fish feeding or f- fish living there anyway but th- i think there's a lot more cormorants than people think it's just i think they're more 
there's more of them in areas, if you know what I mean. You I'll, don't I'll just tell you why it. I say that. I've caught, not caught, not landed, but I've had more pickups from cormorants on my baits the yeah. last three or four years. Well, in fact, up to three, four years ago, I never ha- ever had cormorant problems on my, my dead baits. Mm. But I had one pick one up, I don't know where I was, just before Christmas. Had a stonking great run from a cormorant. Yeah. So, I know, it's mad, but it just makes you think, well, if they're going to that extent, mm. if they're picking up your dead baits as well, I wonder if they're just struggling to find the fish because the fish are packing into more public places. Um, I don't know. I th- yeah, I think they are, the fish are getting tighter and tighter every year, and the fish is getting better and better. But there's a lot of there's a lot of the yeah. amount of silverfish is incredible. Yeah, but there's like when Spolt was was on the podcast, he was saying about the size of the fish, and some venues seem to have smaller fish than others. Whereas March, there's not many little little immature fish. Like in the summer, you walk through and it's full of fry. Where do they go in the winter? Because all all the fish are a good size and they're getting bigger as well each year. And I don't know. And it, whereas the Wellens a bit different, there's a mixture of sizes. It it always used to be like well, up until this year, the three or four years when I fished it near the town bridge, you could chuck a bit of bread in, like a loaf, like floating bread, and it was like piranhas, and they were absolutely tiny little roach. But there was millions and millions and millions of them. Whereas this year, there's tons and tons and tons of roach in there, all of a good size, and you don't see these little fish. So, it's just strange how they'll be there, but probably pushed out of the way by the big probably, ones. Probably, yeah. yeah. And the perch ain't there like they normally are. No, that's the beautiful thing about fishing because we won't know the exact answer. No, no. Right, so that was the first because I remember the the match that you the first match you were talking about. That's when all that water came through. Yeah, that's right. It was a horrible, yeah. horrible wind. Freezing cold wind, and I think a lot of venues fish tough that weekend. Yeah, and the aftermath was the last thing, a week or so afterwards, wasn't it, on the drains yeah. in particular? Yeah. Then Elliot organised that yeah, match. So that Elliot was... had that one, and Pembroke and won it with fifty-three and a half pound. And there was another one since, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. So there was one this Saturday, just a little knock up again. They fished um, basically tax office bridge back towards Chain on on sort of I don't know what it's called really, but. That bit hasn't really been fished because you can't really park. You can't park behind your peg. You, you walk through some alleyways to get to where you are, and that fished really, really well. I think the lowest weight along there was like, apart from a anomaly of fifteen, sixteen pound or whatever, but it was like thirty-two pound. Loads of forties, forty ones, forty threes. Um, it was absolutely solid. And then the other, the other side of the bridge, like tax office and that, and that was that was good, but they were smaller fish. Um, so maybe it's feeling the pressure a little bit, but I mean Tom Edwards won the match, third time he's ever fished a river. Um, come in the shop on Wednesday, sorted him out some floats and rigs and hooks, told him briefly what to do, and him and Winnie and Tobo went the next day and caught a few fish. He's drawn next to tax office and had fifty pound of roach. I mean, you won't be doing that again, will you? <laughs> Solid. <laughs> Yeah, it's fast learner, that's that's for sure. Um, so here's a, here's a day to remember there, really. Um, Runner-up was um, oh, Greg Clark uh, from Derby Way, so he's travelled quite a distance. He's had 49.13, a lot of fish on hemp, again around that top tax office area. Pete Duffy, he's travelled a, a really long way, he's from up the northwest somewhere. He's had 47.6. And then the legend Neil Parkinson was fourth with forty-seven two, so phenomenal fishing, you know. And it, it's great, isn't it? It just it, it does advertise the Fenland drains, just how good they really are or can be. But um, and there's also more matches planned coming up on there. I think there's one organised this Saturday. Tony Evans is running one. He always used to run the matches on there years ago, so a bit of a blast from the past there. Um, and then next Friday, um, I'm help organising a pairs match. So we've got 25 pairs paid. Uh, so a nice 50 pegger on there. And there's some serious anglers coming down for that. So it'll be a real tough, tough one to win. You've got a draw, obviously. And um, really looking forward to that one on there, really. Well, I think it's a case of um, people need to make the most of this because. Yeah, it might not. Like uh, people keep saying, oh, we need to organise this for next year and this and all that. You can't because no. you could go there next year and there'll be four pegs that have got fish in and mm. you think, well, where are all the fish gone? Well, they just it all depends on the weather and 
different circumstances. You're exactly right. It's been very mild. Yeah. And that's probably helped. But um, you've got to make the most of it while they're there. Yeah. And uh, who knows? End of February, they could be gone. Could be. I don't think they will. I think they'll be there now for until, it, you know, springtime. Um, well, I hope they're there anyway. But um, it's, it's phenomenal fishing, really. Really is good. But who knows? Who knows? Who knows? But you're right, it does uh, showcase the fens, and, uh, you know, exactly what's going on at the minute. Right, I've got an idea. Before we go on to more match results, mm-hmm. do you remember my little Swedish chum? Yeah. 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 We did a live podcast on a boat. Do you remember yeah. doing that? We tried to, didn't we? Yeah. 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 We did choose a lot better wind conditions. So, I think we should just tap into that and just see what happened. Yeah, so undaunted by um, our last failure of doing an outside broadcast on a boat, we thought we'd do it again. Not so windy today. While things were a bit slow, I'm going to have a cup of coffee. And I'm with Jimmy Sven the Swede, Hulberg. Jimmy, how's it going? It's uh, very, very slow. Slow as indeed, yes, slow. Slow as Andy, in fact, on a Sunday. Yeah, it's a lot of bait fish, but not so many predators. So, without giving away our location, because it's obviously very top secret, can you tell the listeners of what tactics we are employing at the minute? Right now we're jigging, throwing rubber jigs, along the bottom trying to wake up the guys down there but they don't like us very much right now so might might happen soon you never know i waiting i'm waiting yes it's been a probably a couple of hours at the minute we um we I've had a, i think we've had a you've had a probably a fish You've had one hit. I think I've bounced off the backs of a couple of bream. And that's about it. So once we start getting into them, we'll be describing to the viewers of um, the different retrieves and the different shads that we're using. But at the minute, I'm having a cup of coffee because my hands are cold. It's a bit slow. And uh, nothing is happening. Well, took a bit of, took a bit of time. <laughs> took a lot of time. <laughs> It's not a world record either. No. no. Can you just hold that fellow and hold up? We've got, we have a pike. Not the biggest, probably about eight, ten pounds, would you say? Yeah. Not even that big. No. About. About seven pounds, I should say. Not that big. It's been a hard day on. with the lures. doesn't want me to unhook it. So we've just got one treble right in the scissors. But as always with cold hands. Come on. We've got trying to describe what's happening. We've got the pike in the net and of course one of the trebles has got caught in there. That's fine. Now I've got it under the chin. Just gonna tease its mouth open and just release the other hook. Help your pops. What are you gonna give me, Jimmy? Six, seven? Yeah, seven. It's a bit of a fatty. Yes, it is. It's been a shorty, but a fatty. <laughs> what are you saying? Me or the pike? Uh, both. <laughs> Back she goes. Okay, so we've had two perch. Yeah. And a little Esox. Yes, a little one. But the perch nearly as big as the Esox. Yeah. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> almost, almost. Okay, so um, I think we need to have another half, three quarters an hour fishing hard because there might be the, the grandmother of that big one there. 
maybe. What do you think? Maybe she's down there, or she's just fooling us again. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, we're gonna try and for never. I think his chance of a big Xander. That's what we've come for. You need, you need to catch big Xander. Yes, so, I do. Yes, yeah. I do. so we're gonna turn this off and keep going. So we've made it back to the van. We've had a very, very difficult day, but we've managed to snaffle a few. Jimmy, I'll just uh, just uh, conclude our little trip out on a the boat today. Just wanted to speak to you about uh, one thing that really struck me was how you had far more follows to the boat than I did, and it was obviously linked to your the different retrieves that you were trying. So maybe you can explain to the listeners when you um, fish plastics for perch. Xander and small pike of how you try and change the retrieve to get a few follows I can do uh, when the bottom is like it was on this lake I try to bounce it on the bottom and like jig it up just yeah normal jigging with plastics up and down let it hit the bottom and get it up a little bit and then slowly let it fall down and then I also do like a short like a long pull of the bait slow along so it goes like a retrieve along the bottom but then I end the pull with a little bit upwards so it looks like the bait is going like the bottom heading up just a short so you put it tip. along the, so you put it along the bottom yeah and then you give it a little pull up with the rod tip to just pull it up a foot or two yeah at first I just pull it like horizontal at the, at the end of the pull I just go a little bit up so it makes a, like a horizontal going along the bottom and then go vertical up a little bit just like it that's interesting because uh, last time we were out you were telling me that that is a retrieve that in your part of Sweden has been very successful this year for the perch yeah both the perch and the pike have started to like it somehow I don't know why but I think we brought it back from the States when they're jigging the big rubber baits. But they're making a much harder pull than we do. So it's just like a slow pull, you know. And uh, so it makes like a long pull and pause, long pull and pause. So they, I don't know, but the pike like it a lot right now. So we've been doing it a lot, me and a friend. Well, it worked very well because you had a three pound perch. So that's not a bad, um bad start on English waters and I think you said that was your biggest UK perch yeah that's definitely my biggest UK perch and maybe the only one but it's definitely my biggest one for sure um, just so you put everything into sort of um, perspective what is your biggest Swedish perch my biggest Swedish perch should be somewhere about 3.8 pounds something like, that. something like that if you translate it it's 1680 kilograms so to speak right and also you've had a lot of fish over well three pounds haven't you you've had a lot of big perch yeah we do we we're, we're fortunate to live close to a very good perch water so i've been there i was i haven't fished perch so much lately but i we've been there a few trips now and uh, I did it with two friends and I think we had over 150 perch and at least more than half of them was over was about three pounds so it's a good day. Wow that's that's incredible perch fishing. Well I managed one a bit smaller but I think mine was two pound four and we've had a few pike as well and um, we've managed we've managed well three and a half days fishing and one and a half days we just blanked totally it's been awful with the extra rain coming down but we have had two days of good sport and at the minute it's 2-0 to England. Yeah, <laughs> it's the bitter end I guess. <laughs> uh, I have to take that defeat. But at least I got the biggest bream. I can live with that. <laughs> you did get the biggest bream. Um, so I think we need to resume the competition when I come over to Sweden, hopefully sometime in May. Absolutely, we should do that. And I, will, I think I will even give you the two non two nil to start with in Sweden that's how confident I am you are feeling that confident 
Yes, sir, I am. I am. I am. Because it's a totally different kind of fishing for you. So, you're gonna fish two feet of water with no lead on it at all. And uh, it's gonna be interesting to see your reaction first time you ever fish it. Yeah, well, I'm sure, I think it'll take me a good a good day to get the hang of it, I should say. But then again, we do have the uh, the glorious adventure of going for the muskies in August. So um, I believe you're so scared of me that you've got seven more Swedes to take me on as well. Yeah, we got Sven, Olaf, August, Igor, Tor, all of them is coming just to teach you how to fish among things, if we say it like that. And hopefully not to make me drink too much Danish poison. No, we stick to the Irish, I think. The Irish poison, you seem to like that. Um, yeah, so it's musky fishing in America for August. And is it the most musky or the biggest musky that counts? Both, actually. There's one price for both, the biggest one and most. And if you get both, you get the whole lot. So, And it's, um, it's a good size bet pays for your next trip or your next ticket almost. Is this so. is there some kind of forfeit for the biggest fish as well? Have you got to wear some daft clothing? Uh, yeah, we had a bra, <laughs> sports bra this year. So they ever caught the biggest fish for the day had to wear it during the evening. So that was nice. Martin Brumberg, he needed it. He asked for tape because his tits were jumping but <laughs> I went and bought him a sports bra instead so he can relax in the van we had so i hear brad hoppy's um getting an extra special piece of equipment for us for the biggest fish yeah he sent me a text actually with a kind of a wrestling belt said biggest muskie and uh, i hope he's get that one that would be funny i like to wear it yeah but you got to catch a fish first and after this week i, I think i've seen how you can fish and i'm worried for you it's called saving up, sir. <laughs> now, joking apart, Jimmy, it's been brilliant fun. We've had an absolute scream on the, on the boats the last few days, and it's been an absolute pleasure to have you over in England, and I'm sure it won't be the last time. Absolutely not. If you have me back, I would love to come. It's been super awesome, actually. It's interesting to see, and the possibility of catching a nice fish is there. So I like it a lot, and it's funny to some... It's a little bit of a, what do you call it, old school fishing mixed with new school fishing. I can would say call it that. Yeah, we have to, um, we've got lots of technology, but we have to wheel it down to the boats in little barrows and manhandle it and have all sorts of strange contraptions to keep it onto the boat. So um, it's not like you guys with your uh, your man-made, well, your, your, your personalized boats that are very American style, because that is just awesome. We have to kind of, um, Keith Robbins in it together and it's a bit painful at times but we get by and I think you've enjoyed doing old school yeah give me some exercise <laughs> so I'm feeling thinner than ever actually so and that's I can have some extra food tonight yeah that's we can sure. yeah New Year's Eve so we're gonna go out tonight have a curry and uh, we might see Mr Bates out in the ship pub later right Jimmy absolute pleasure we need to concentrate because I'm about to get on the main road and I'm sure we don't want to crash before we go home. But it's been a pleasure having you and we'll have you back very soon. It's been lovely being here and uh, Gott nytt år, alla engelsmen. Bye. So that was Jimmy again. Had a fantastic time of him spending Christmas and New Year with us. Talking in New Year. Cassano boy, have you got your um, your boy. membership through yet? Uh, you're funny, ain't you? Off air, Alex pay, Tom. I want pay to go in there. <laughs> Off air, Alex told me he used to be a regular in yeah. casinos. Okay, we have forgotten one thing. We only did. We've, we're not very good actually. We were going to do a venue first podcast of each month. This is the fir first podcast in January, yep. and we have forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. So we're just looking at the calendar or the match fishing calendar that's coming up, and there are a lot of March opens. Yeah, it, March is going to get a lot of focus in these next six weeks because of the winter league final and the march opens and it, just how good it is anyway so it makes sense to to do the old river neem so yeah we'll do that next week and we hope we, and we can include bennick in the old river neem as well can't we so yeah and we might have a 
Oh, yeah, another Finland legend. <laughs> uh, cheesy Bob. Cheesy Bob. It's not easy being cheesy, you know. Has he confirmed, or do we need to go uh, and kidnap no, him? he'll be all right. He'll come on, I'm sure he will. Cool. Just give him a pint of beer, he'll be here. Perfect. Yeah. Um, right. Something I forgot to mention a couple of podcasts ago. Had my first ever article published, just to be a bit big-headed. Mm. Yeah, that was good. So that was in the Lure Angler Society Journal, and that was on musky fishing in America. And should have another one coming out soon on Wolf Creek Lures. So it's all good stuff. We're getting good. our names put about. And did you want to talk about... Oh, no. I was just keeping something secretive. Yeah. I'll keep that secretive. Yeah. No, cool. Right, I'm, I've got to tell you about a little incident today, which wasn't great. Um, I was out trying a different drain today, and <clears throat> didn't catch anything as per. But I did have a visit from two of our Eastern European friends about half past two this afternoon. And for, they looked like they were up to no good. There was two of them, one rod, and the old black match seat boxes. And I'm thinking, what are they doing? Now, they walked a little bit away from me, and I saw one of the guys bend down with the black seat box and start to fill it with water. And I thought, oh, the other guy was going on there. Yeah, the other guy started catching some little bits and pieces, and every fish he caught went into the box. So, I did... It's funny keeping it, that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So, it's not what you need. So, I phoned the Environment Agency hotline, got an incident number. Um, They... That they parked right near me, so I did a bit of a my Poirot impression. I went and got the number plate as well. Phoned back the environment agency, but I phoned Kai, Kai Jerem, and he was actually on holiday. But bless him, he answered the phone. He got in touch with Alex Thompson, who was on duty, mm-hmm. EA enforcement officer. Yeah. And about an hour later, Alex turned up, and yeah, he was absolutely brilliant with these two guys. They had rod licenses. Um, they had. <laughs> by the time Alex got down the bank to them, they emptied the contents of the seat box back into the drain. Alex did ask them why there was water in their tackle box, and the answer was to stabilise the box on the bank. Oh, they've been asked that question before then, obviously. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. so sadly, they got aw- well, they didn't get away with it because they didn't take the fish away, but yeah, they were going to take these little roach and whatever just for... Whoa. Whatever. Whatever. It was unbelievable. But uh, I can't praise the Environment Agency high enough. Kai, you were superb. Alex Thompson was an absolute legend coming out and sorting that out. And he was brilliant with them because, you know, he just told them that they can't do that, blah, blah, blah. And hopefully, I don't think we're going to stop them, but we can move them on. And I think that's the thing to do is keep, keep your eyes open and keep reporting things. Now, the reason why I'm not telling people where which drain this was on is that if we keep highlighting incidents, I'm hoping other guys keep an eye out on what's going on around them and do the same. Get in touch with the Environment Agency, report any wrongdoings, and they will respond appropriately. If you're unsure, you can always contact us via the Facebook page and we'll give you advice as well. So, little tale. Um, I, suppose, I suppose it was a happy ending in a way that the fish didn't get taken, but um, there's a lot of fish removal going on and it just make you wonder what happens in the dark uh away from main roads and yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of keep your eyes open haven't you yeah definitely and if in doubt just seek whenever advice. i'm coming back from somewhere i'm always going along the drains obviously living in the fens we're always driving along a drain somewhere and just have to keep your eyes open and you know if something's not right don't you straight away you think mm, that don't seem right well two guys one rod yeah. isn't right no. and the fact they they tried to fish really close to me and I, sh- I shouted at them because my end rod and they caught two fish straight away and then moved two pegs further away immediately and you're thinking if you just started catching why are you moving mm. it's because they were trying to get out of my eye line so you can you can tell when people mm. up to no good yeah. so just keep eyes and ears open and like I said report things to the environment agency and we will help out where we can as well Right, on a more positive front then, Alex, um, you've got something called Hajak. Hajak. Well, we call it Monk Jack League. The Monk Jack League. Yeah, that's League. our nickname for it, because most of the venues of fish, Monk Jack can jump over them. That's how narrow they are. But you've got Bagpuss involved as well. Yeah, Bagpuss Select, yeah. yeah. That's one of, my, uh, one of the teams associated with the tackle shop. Um, John Price is obviously team captain for that team, and... 
he's known as Bagpus. Have you, you got a look? Professor Yaffle? Yaffle? He wasn't the woodpecker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've, we've, we've got some funny nicknames for a few of the lads, but Bagpus is definitely the right one for, for Pricey. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, the Hayjack League was, was, was hard, to be honest. Um, it felt like this Sunday the venues are just starting to feel the pressure of, or I feel the angling pressure of the big matches coming up. Before you go into the results, because yeah. I didn't have a clue what this yeah. was, can you just explain what Hey Jack means? So Hey Jack is Huntington and Joint Angling Clubs. Right, okay. Or Good. adjacent clubs. It'll do. Something like that. It's I don't think anyone knows what it stands for, really. But There are lots of teams. I was confused by the team names as well. Yeah, so it's teams of six. It's not your regular teams of ten. So there's 14 teams of six, so it's 84 pegger. It's a, it's a big match, you know. Um, so a lot of the teams are sort of split down into two or three. Like, we've got four associated with the, with the shop, with Tackle and Bates. And basically, it's... It's, it's a seriously because the the anglers of fish are you know red hot. They're some serious competition in that league. Um, excuse me, but it's it's friendly as well. Um, originally, and I think it still is the sort of to a certain extent, the teams fishing it could only be within the CB or PE postcode. Um, so we have got quite a few teams that fish our league. So they're all local teams. Um, it's just a great league it seems to be getting stronger and stronger obviously the winter league final on the drains definitely helps um, but then there's a lot of teams that fish it that haven't qualified for the winter league final and just want to fish it because the fishing's so good um, yeah so I, I think I think I'm not sure who won it well, might have been the Bagpuss team was either first or second last year and our team was second or third and Mark won might have won it it's always close, you know. You've got Stan J Gold image this year. Um, Hot Rods have got a team in it this year. It, it'll, it's always close, and they're big sections of fourteen. So and is it a four round competition? It's four rounds. So there's three rounds before the Winter League final, and one round after. Uh, is the Winter League final on the same venues? Pretty much, yeah. Right. So, so it's winter, a warm up, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of teams taking note of the Hayjack League. Put it that way. It's the. Pegging's not going to be the same for the final, but similar, so you can sort of take a lot of a lot from the results um, and how the venues change as well. You can sort of you can see where the hot pegs are, and especially in big sections, like for example, what in first section at Factory Bank, it pretty much has gone first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, all the way down to last to peg. I think it was E14. Um, so that gives you a good idea, and the same with Benick. The nearer the town you are, the bigger the weights, and the nearer Little London you are, you know, wherever there's cover, the weights seem to progress. Um, so yeah, it, 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 it's a tough league, it is a tough league, um, but it, it fished okay. So, I mean, all the leading weights were on the 20 foot at Chain Bridge, um, which is the first bridge you come to from basically March past the rugby club and, and you you turn up on chain bridge usually well the last two years the fish have all been at the footbridge and bizarrely well not bizarrely just how it is in the fens there's no fish there at the footbridge this year um for what reason or another but it's actually better because you can get more pegs at chain bridge it's a bit wider and i think the fish the fish spread out so it isn't quite as i don't think the weights are quite as big but they're still pretty pretty consistent you know, um, Tony Watling won the match, uh, the first peg to the right of Chainbridge. It's won quite a few matches this year, that peg. Um, it's a little bit deeper, I think, and it's a little bit cleaner on the bottom, so you can get a rig to, excuse me, to fish properly. Um, he's won the match with £36.11, so it's still a big weight. Um, just ground bait and pinky, short, sort of four to hand. He had a lovely day. Second was a um, teammate of mine, Sam Merry. He's from Leicester, so he travels a long way. He's had £30.3, ground bait pinky again. Um, so he's had a lovely day. Third in the whole match was obviously third at Chainbridge. Ben Lawrence had 26 one And fourth was Darren Davis. Da um, <coughs> Darren Davis with £24.1. And he's caught a lot of small rud. He's been 
peg one, which is three away from the bridge. So he's just got his head down and caught this really, really small rod. He's caught, I don't know how many he's caught, but he's had 24 pounds. So he's had a nice day. But I think the top seven or eight all come from, from 20 foot. Um, the, there was a section on the allotment starting from the windmill, the famous windmill peg. Um, Wayne Easter won that section with £20 and basically the further you got away towards the bypass the weights gradually got lower and lower. Um, lots of 14s, there was an 18, you know, lowest, lowest weight was like £10 I think so really consistent through there. Lots of small roach and perch, considering how much hammer that's nearly had a match on it every single Sunday through there and it's still holding up and hopefully it holds up for the final touch wood. It'd be nice to have a little cold snap for probably two or three weeks and then the week before the final or two weeks before the final I'll get a load of rain again and the venues all proper switch on and it would be phenomenal fishing really. Um, so that was the, the old Neen and the 20 foot sections. Um, moving on to Benick. Benick was um, a bit moody to say the least. Um, town pegs caught plenty of small fish, lots of little little roach and then sort of the next sort of seven or eight pegs, I think nearly eight pound was top weight, lots of perch, odd dumpy roach, mm -hmm. and then again, past the wires, not brilliant, and then on the boats it was solid, 14s and 13 pounds of fish, so typical Benick, lots of, it was very clear this weekend, really was clear, so um, hopefully that will draw the fish in a bit. Um, and then factory bank, so, Peg one at Factory Bank was the top weight, which it always is when it goes clear and a bit sort of moody. Um, pegs one and two were first and second on there, and like I say, it's just gone down like peg order pretty much. There's a few people that be a couple of pegs above. And then moving on to the section I was in, Steve uh, Hemingway was the first peg. Um, he's had six pound eleven, and then there was a six pound. 15 Tom Moretti just passed the tree he won the section with that and it was very very poor then sort of one pound one pound eight hardly any roach to catch I was on the very end peg which hasn't been in this year there wasn't even a peg cut out where I drew and I didn't fancy it at all I really didn't it was um it's really narrow there steep and it just didn't look great and um John Price aka Bagpuss was on my right and we were moaning all day, you know, oh, they're going to batter us down the other end of the section. It turns out we we weren't in a bad area, really. I had £6.7, that got me third, so I, I was really happy with that from, from that draw. Um, were you on Factory Bank? Then? Yeah, so yeah. I was I was basically peg 28. Peg 1 is where you want to be, and 28 is down the other end. Um, so I, I was I was happy with £6.7. Um, you know when you fish your peg and you think, I've done all right, I've done my you know, as best I can from a peg today. That's all I can take from it, you know. If, if I come ninth in a section, that's, you know, you can't do any better than that. Yeah, so yeah. I was over the moon that I got third. But then at the same time, I was a little bit gutted that I had £6.7 and 6 15 won the section. So it's... Um, I looked at the results and I thought, ooh, that was close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but the team results were... Yeah, well, Even that's closer. the thing. We we went got back to the the pub and it was like, where you come uh, sixth, where you come sixth, where you come. Well, I've been set third, oh, we're second. Oh, uh, cricket score. Didn't really think a lot to it. The word on in the pub was image. You got three section wins. Blah blah blah. And it was like, oh, well, they've 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 annihilated the match. Well done, image. And sort of the calling out results: fourteenth, thirteenth, twelfth. I don't think it. We reckon we've got 30 points. I thought we'd be about 6th, 7th. And um, we were joint 2nd, so we were well happy with that. We did have two end pegs, but they were completely the wrong end pegs. You know, we drew A14 when you want to be in the first 7 pegs. Uh, we drew, my peg was an end peg, which you would not fancy that at all. Um, got lucky that it fished pants and you could sort of gain a few places. Um Gav didn't draw very well. He drew two pegs past the wires in the Little London section, but luckily enough, past Little London fished absolutely abysmal, so he ended up sick out of his 14, so we were happy with that. Um, Sam, obviously, second in the match, second in his section on 20 foot. Goddard's won his seven pegs, so he beat the bloke to his right and everyone to his left, but couldn't beat the pegs near the windmill, so he was sixth. Um... 
Who else do we have? I'm trying to think. Oh, Alistair Ogilvy. He was seventh. He was peg 11 in his section and basically beat two or three above him. So he's done well. So it was a bit sort of, we went from sort of a sort of mixed atmosphere to a quite a positive one. And the Bagpas team um, ended up coming fourth, obviously because it wasn't a third place, with 39. So there's quite a big jump in points from joint second to fourth. But it means that uh, the Dive Tackle and Bates are second in the league with Image first and equal second with Mark 1 White. And then Dive Bagpas, Tackle and Bates. Um, a four, so it's you know that could one bad draw and it's anyone's really. It is anyone's. Yeah, you're just explaining how it's all the apart from twenty foot, the weights were well apart from the allotment section, they weren't yeah. too bad, but the rest yeah. of the weights weren't what you'd expect. No, no, which it, meant it made it you could if you fished had, yes, had a really good yeah, yeah you could yeah, catch I, up and overtake the people. The problem with the good thing is with bigger sections. Say you do draw a poor area, but you fish well, it means more in the long run. Do you see what I mean? Because you've beat those around you and you've gained them points. Whereas with smaller sections, you, you might fish a really good match, but you don't really c gain anything. Well, if you're a section of five people, you've got very little chance unless you're on yeah. the going pegs. Yeah. yeah so it is sense. nice to fish a match with big sections, but then it's peggy as well. So, you know, there's always going to be a draw on the day that's better than anyone yeah, else's. Yeah. And but over four can't, matches, can't it should, help that. should even itself out. Yeah, it, hopefully, it? yeah. But so the way Tom Moretti draws, I don't know. <coughs> I don't know, he's a bit of a uh, Picasso, is Tom. You've got a bee in your bonnet about this. What, drawing? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're a match angler, that's all we have to moan about, isn't it? So that was the first round. You've got three more to go. Yeah. And you've got so round two, round three, and then you've got the big Winter League. Yeah, and round so that, four. the Winter League final is Saturday the 22nd of Feb. Um, so that's what, as a team, we're all sort of geared up for. Um, How does the decoy bit play into this then because yeah. you can have all these guys fishing that's the drains that's the problem because our league is all on the drains we've got we could have we could pick 12 anglers for the drains um, so the decoy bit is is awkward yeah. and it always is for whatever team qualifies in the local East Middle and Winter League because the majority of the anglers are drain anglers but we're quite lucky we've got anglers that can do a bit of both um, so we've got sort of Six lads going to decoy, sussing that out. I mean, they do know it really well anyway. They've fished it pretty much all year round anyway. Um, obviously, Jimmy, Godders, Josh, they know it really, really well. Adam, um, so and Winters, Steve Winters as well. They're sort of going to cry and uh, suss it out, and Steve Slater as well. So it's <coughs> decoy... For us, we we mainly see it as the drains, you know, that's what we're looking at. But to win the Winter League final, you need a brilliant set of pegs, obviously. You need to fish well, but decoy is the decider, really, because you can draw a peg at decoy and you only can catch what your peg's worth, whereas you could draw a peg on the drains, a bit of local knowledge, a bit, you know, a bit of tactics getting it right, and you can gain, gain points. Whereas decoy, sometimes you could literally say, well, that peg will win, that peg will win. But at the minute, it's warm. It, it's anyone's game at the minute. But if it goes cold, it'll be a bit grim. Very yeah, grim. Yeah. So There's going to be some flies and there's going to be some no Yeah, there is on yeah. the drains as well. But, yeah. you know, that's, that's fishing. It is fishing. fishing. Yeah, it is fishing. Aquatic bingo, as they say. Aquatic bingo. Um, we're not going to go into other clubs this week. Mainly because we're going to let everyone get sorted into the new year, I think. Yes. And go from there. Yeah. 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 Is there anything else you want to mention on the Hayjack front? Um, no, really. We've got the next round is two weeks' time. So, ne of, sorry, next week you've got the March so Open. So, this Sunday coming, the 12th, is the March Open. Yeah. Um, the following week is round two of the, of the Hayjack. Yeah. Um, which again, same drain, so two sections Bennett, two at Patchery, one at March, one on 20 foot. Then uh, the 20, hang on, let's work it out, let's get it right. So that's the 19th of Jan is Hayjack round two. 
Sunday the 26th of Jan is a March Open and Stan J tackle run an open match on the drain. So 20 foot factory bank Benick. Um, for those that can't get on the March Open, because obviously there's a limited amount of pegs for March. Plus you've got already got a lot of anglers in this area that fish March. So there's always, you know, there's always people looking for a match. Um, so to book into those matches, just contact Stan Binge um, at Stan J Tackle. And the telephone number for that is 01480 453 303. And Fizz or Stan will, will book you in for that. Um, then the week after that is Hey Jack Round 3, which is the... Hang on. No, I've missed something there. So the 26th of Jan is the March Open. Then the 2nd of Feb is just a Stan J Winter League practice so you'll need to book in with Stan for that um, then you've got the March Open on no I'll get it right in a minute Sunday the 9th of February did you ever go to school I did I did uh, but the teachers time. weren't no good um, <laughs> they haven't got any better since <laughs> <laughs> and then so Sunday the 9th is Hey Jack Winter League Round 3 Sunday the 16th of Feb is March Open then following Saturday is the Angling Times or Angling Trust should I say Winter League Final so that's what the big one is the following Sunday there isn't a match at the minute but I'd hazard a guess if the Townwell and still fishing there'll be a match on there and then we've got the Hayjack round 4 which is March the 1st Sunday the 8th of March is the last March Open and then Saturday the 14th of March is the last day of the season so hopefully by then you'll be catching Tench out of the 20 foot of the footbridge and it'll be brilliant but yeah so not long really when you think about it till the end of the river season no it's not long at all no. it's quite sad yeah what are you going to do you have to get to Casano's twice a weekend no thank you I don't <laughs> want to be stuck to the floor in there with all the booze and yeah no thank you joking apart though yeah, you've got your next two and a half months are yeah, taken this is basically for me from I go to Ireland in September, so the first week in September, and that's me pretty much every Sunday um, to the end of March, uh, start of March. Yeah. Or end of March, really, because I think we've got the Census Challenge then at the end of March as well. So once that's over and done with, uh, it's busy in the shop then, and um, yeah, it's, it's all systems go in that sense. But I'm hoping to get out a bit more this summer and and do a bit of fishing on the Trent, hopefully. Oh, marble? Yeah. No, 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 no. Roach, fishing, stick float, waggler, pole, proper max fishing, so. Nice. nice. Yeah. My headphones just went funny. Yeah. I don't know what that was. I think got a ghost. Yeah. Did you hear my phone going off a few minutes ago? Yes. It was messages from America. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, they're musculars. This guy is a legend at... Um, doing these things and they've got the Chicago Fair two weeks time I think right. so last last year his stall got moved back nearly a metre really by the crush really yeah the guy had the stall behind him was selling these posh knives kitchen knives yeah and Joe Peterson who's this guy had to go and buy a knife very expensive knife off the guy off the stall behind him just to say sorry because the the crush of these guys just wanted his baits that's sad, isn't it? I mean, that's br it's brilliant, <laughs> but it's it's mad, isn't it? Fair play to a hundred to three hundred dollars a throw. Really? Yeah. yeah. He um makes his paint jobs. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you. That's when my phone was Shame going. Shame can't middle. sell floats for that price, isn't it? Really? Or maggots? I thought yeah, you maggots. were trying to because I do hear your floats are very expensive. Oh right, yeah. 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 Not really. Yeah. How are things going in the tackle shop? Yeah, all right actually. It's um. January think, now. I mean, Christmas was good. I think it'd be people. a bit slow beginning of Jan. Yeah, it always is. January's always crap. Um, you get the first week in January's okay because people still got a bit of Christmas money and, you know, there's new stuff and, and bits and bobs. But you get end of January. Luckily for us, we've got the Winter League final. And because I do specialise in the match, drain, that sort of thing, it's um, it's quite it's quite steady for me, you know. Um so yeah, I, it's, it's the fishing I do as well. So I do enjoy the winter. I know it sounds silly that you want to be. We're always busy. There's always something to do. But I've got a bit more time to sort of 
think about my fishing and and that and i do enjoy it being a bit quieter and then as soon as march is here as soon as the the sun's shining the till's ringing fish are feeding and it's all systems go you know five in the morning till eight o'clock at night riddling casters turning bait stocking shelves and it, it's mad it is mad which is good you know that's what i enjoy it's what i do it's um it's brilliant yeah well that's you've living the dream really because you, you are you're doing yeah. something you really want to do yeah. alex anything else you wanted to add um no not really um uh, that's it really mate yeah we'll cover I'll talk about march a bit more next week We've got quite a lot to cover talk about march and bennick um perhaps go through some rigs and different areas um so yeah no i think we've covered quite a lot obviously we've had sort of a week gap we've got plenty of match results and i think the area will get a lot of attention these next sort of five weeks before the winter league final and um i think if people listening to the podcast will probably gain quite a lot of information for that final so yeah i mean just before we finish just to give everyone a heads up i mean we we are a bit match orientated but we've done it on purpose because we know that yeah. we're hitting the hot spot yeah but I mean, if matches. you describe the fens what is it known for match fishing and pike fishing yeah you know and hopefully we're covering it doing it justice and um well i can't i haven't caught a pike in 2020 yet so i'm doing i'm on fire yeah well, yeah you had a good 2019 though didn't you Shh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah we would no but yeah 2019's been all right right okay um i was gonna say one or two extra things but i'm just talking nonsense now which is probably most of the time um i think we're about to wrap it up yeah yeah, yeah. well it's been a pleasure as always uh yeah and i, I should have said this at the beginning happy new year to you and to you mate hopefully arsenal will get three points <laughs> <laughs> we'll be checking the football as well. I think it was nil nil at half time. Yeah. It's oh, pitiful. Come on, We won't go there. Right, Alex, you're a legend. Let's Thank go. You. Time <laughs> to go home. Okay, this has been Tales from the Tackle Shop, a Fenland Fishing TV production. <laughs>